I like this opportunity to, uh, you know, I, I knew that I was going to do a blog. I uh, had not thought about a video blog. Uh, Assistant City Manager Billy Tyus uh, mentioned this opportunity and uh, not that I necessarily want to see myself on TV any more than I already am on TV, but it's, it's a great opportunity for uh, me to share some of the things that are going on in the community. Uh, and I promise you that uh, I will always be open and honest, uh, and you're going to get uh, you're going to get the bad as well as the good. Uh, item two, actually, this one's very exciting. Uh, Seth Stark, and actually, uh, I think folks will remember from our uh, GIS department uh, that uh, uh, he introduced uh, the new uh, mapping uh, related to uh, some of the violations that we've got in the city. Well, Seth has done it again under. Uh, the leadership uh, supervisor, Jim Edwards, uh, he's created a, uh, uh, using the city's mapping technology, he has created, uh, and I'm not going to explain it well, and I apologize for that, so that's why everybody needs to tune in on Monday night and then uh, check out the website. We'll have a link to this, but uh, our ma mapping technology goes back to 1941 for the city of Decatur. And it allows a slide, uh, left to right, right to left, but uh, you can advance and land on different years in between 1941 and today's date. It, it's pretty cool. Item number three. Uh, this is one where uh, it's receiving and filing a proposed redevelopment agreement with Pace Hospitality. Uh, the city is uh, about ready in the north end of town uh, to uh, get a new holiday in. Um, it is in the city, but uh, again, it's uh, up in the north end, north of uh, Interstate 72. And uh, very exciting, uh, another opportunity for us to have uh, a hotel in the city. A resolution authorizing the application U.S. EPA, Brownfields, this is something uh, that we've done in the past. It's just quite simply uh, a request to uh, uh, you know, update the application. Public hearing on the tax levy. Uh, this is one where uh, statutorily, we're required whenever there is a property tax levy proposal in excess of 5%, uh, you have to hold a public hearing. Uh, this is one thing that uh, Mayor Moore Wolf uh, said last night at the uh, study session on the budget. The entire time that she's been on council, there has never been a public hearing related to the property tax increase, which means uh, the city has not increased in excess of 5%. Also, the other thing that was interesting in the study session last night is you look at the drop in the overall value of property in the city. It's dropped in the last, uh, I believe, the six-year period, it's dropped right around $100 million, uh, from like $925 million down to like $833 million. Don't quote me on the numbers, but it's somewhere uh, of, a, of a drop of about $100 million over a course of five or six years. That's huge. Uh, you know, we need to be going in a different direction and I uh, uh, think that uh, some of the investment in uh, some of the blighted areas uh, can turn things around and also create new economic development opportunities. Uh, so we, we've got opportunities. Next item, uh, resolution approving the 2016 budget. Uh, that's something that was discussed last night uh, at the uh, study session for the budget. And quite simply, uh, the proposal's been presented to council and the action uh, can be taken on uh, Monday night. The ordinance approving the hotel tax. Uh, currently, we charge a 6% uh, tax and the proposal is to increase that to 8%. You, even with this new hotel that's going in on the north end, uh, do not feel that that uh, small jump is going to uh, make any negative impact uh, at all. Uh, and even the amount between the 6 and 8 percent, it's a relatively small number uh, for the city. It's about $240,000 increase, but it's a number that uh, uh, will help us uh, cover the deficit in the FY16 budget. Uh, ordinance authorizing the increase in the local utility tax, our current rate is 1.25 percent. Most of the comparable communities here, we're low. Um, and, and even uh, the city of Peoria, you know, just about an hour up, uh, up the road, they're at a full 5%. Uh, our proposal is to be at uh, four and a quarter percent, uh, and this is an action item that the uh, city will vote on. Uh, but this is going to generate uh, some major revenues for the city, help us cover that shortfall on the uh, FY16 budget, and still be at a level that's comparable with other communities. And I say that 
realizing that any increase, I mean, there's a lot of families that are challenged out there. Uh, so I'm not suggesting any increase to any of these items is uh, uh, acceptable uh, to their uh, personal finances, but it, it truly, there, there's a need for the city. Uh, would not have proposed it otherwise. We're in survival mode. When, when, it, when it comes to our uh, financial and fiscal challenges that we've got as a city providing services to the community. But I don't necessarily think that we uh, should just focus on the survival mode. I also think that we have other opportunities, which is what you just didn't mention, uh, whether it's neighborhood uh, redevelopment, uh, urban revitalization, some of the other things that the council has talked to, talked to me about and said that these are priorities for you. We have got so many good things that are going on. Right? If, if we don't take this extra effort uh, and we just allow ourselves to be in the survival mode that I just described, uh, there's a lot of good things that are happening around us that I think we'll mi have missed an opportunity. Um, so this, this extra investment, while it's uh, very, very tough in these uh, uh, times for these families that are just trying to get by, I think, I, I, I'm hoping what resonates with the community is the fact that we're always going to be able to point to these victories that we are uh, accomplishing uh, with uh, uh, neighborhood redevelopment, uh, you know, some of the economic development uh, opportunities uh, that we're bringing right here to the city. Item 9, uh, ordinance amending the scope of uh, the GEO bonds for the parking garage improvements. We need to change uh, the scope of what those bonds allow us to do with those funds and in this case we need, we need them to uh, make some structural improvements to our parking decks. Next item is actually, uh, if that's approved, then we move on to the next item and uh, that's actually the uh, company uh, that bid for the work and uh, requesting the council approve uh, uh, accepting uh, that bid for the parking deck uh, work. Next item, uh, bid for water treatment chemicals. We, we do this annually. It's just the chemicals needed for uh, water production. It's one that uh, the uh, water department uh, manager, Keith Alexander, is going to bring forward. Uh, next item is uh, an agreement with Hanson Professional Services uh, to design the Lake Decatur Dam Emergency Action Plan. Again, this is one uh, uh, that Keith Alexander is bringing forward. The state requires that we have an action plan, uh, that if something would happen to the dam, uh, you know, what, what, what action plan is in place uh, if, if something bad would happen. Uh, resolution agreement with Macon County Soil Water Conservation District. Uh, this is just for the uh, annual uh, watershed management agreement. Uh, it's pretty routine.